Hey guys, welcome back to the Art of Server. Are you looking for an external HBA to connect your disk enclosure to your computer or server? Perhaps you've watched my HBA comparison video from 2020 and you've narrowed down your choices to the two most common external HBAs, the LSI 9200-8E and the 9207-8E. Which one do you choose? That's the question I'm gonna help you answer in this video. Now, before we get into it, please smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm so more people can benefit from the information I'm about to share with you. And if you're into building your own servers for true NAS, Unraid, or any other NAS, subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss my next video. All right, let's get into it. So here I have the 9200-8E and over here I have the 9207-8E. Both of these have two SFF8088 SAS ports facing out the rear of the card. Both cards can be configured with a full profile or low profile bracket to suit whatever your server needs. The 9207-8E is a newer generation than the 9200-8E, but this doesn't mean it's better in every way. So here are the eight major differences between these two external HBAs. All right, so the first difference is that the 9200-8E is based on the LSI SAS 2008 chipset. This is basically a PowerPC 440 single core processor running at 533 megahertz. The 9207-8E is based on the LSI SAS 2308 chipset, which is also a PowerPC 440 single core processor, but clocked at 800 megahertz, which is a 50% boost in clock speed over the 9200-8E. Uh, this architectural difference underlies a lot of the other differences we're gonna cover in the rest of this video. The second difference is that the 9200 Dash 8E is a PCI 2.0 by 8 card. This provides up to 32 gigabits of PCI bandwidth when installed in a PCI 2.0 by 8 slot. This amount of PCI bandwidth is typically enough for most hard drive based storage systems up to about 16 hard drives. If you are using a larger drive enclosure with more than 16 drives, then I would suggest you consider the 9207-8E. And this is because the 9207-8E is a PCIe 3.0 by 8 card and provides up to 62 gigabits per second of PCIe bandwidth if you install it in a PCIe 3.0 by 8 slot. Now there is one caveat that I want to mention. The SAS 2308 chipset that is in the 9207-8E has two revisions. The one I've been talking about is the D1 revision and is the most common. However, there is an earlier revision named B0, which is occasionally found in cards like the HP H221, which is confusingly labeled as a 9207-8E, and the LSI 9205-8E. If you have the B0 version of this controller, then it only supports PCI 2.0. The third difference between the 9200-8E and the 9207-8E is power consumption. As you might have guessed from the clock speed boost mentioned earlier, the 9200-8E at 533 MHz consumes less power than the 9207-8E running at 800 MHz. The nominal power consumption of the 9200-8E is 7.92 watts with a maximum power rating of 13.2 watts. The 9207-8E consumes a little over 20% more power at a nominal power rating of 9.8 watts and a maximum power rating of 16 watts. If power consumption is a priority for you, consider the 9200-8E. Now, as a consequence of the higher power consumption, the fourth difference between the 9200-8E and the 9207-8E is the amount of heat generated and the cooling requirements. In my subjective experience using both of these cards, I can tell you that the 9207-8E feels significantly hotter than the 92. 100-8E. Neither of these cards should ever be passively cooled. They both require airflow over their heat sinks. But if you're using a silent PC case that has a little, only a little airflow, you're better off with the 9200-8E. I would still add a small fan to blow over their heat sinks. Now, according to Broadcom, the 9200-8E should have a minimum airflow of 200 LFM. 
I couldn't find an official figure for the 9207-80, but my personal recommendation would be at least 260 to about 300 LFM. All right, so far we've talked about some of the negative consequences of that faster processor in the 9207-8E, but the fifth difference between the 9200-8E and the 9207-8E is a positive consequence of that faster 800 megahertz processor in the 9207-8E, and that is the higher IOPS capability. The 9200-8E is officially rated at 320,000 IOPS. This is by no means a small number to scoff at, as it easily exceeds by a large margin the IOPS needed for any hard drive based storage system. However, the faster 9207-8E is officially rated at over 650,000 IOPS. This is definitely the HBA you want when working with SSDs. The sixth difference between the 9200-8E and the 9207-8E is the maximum number of addressable drives. The 9200-8E is capable of addressing up to 512 N devices, both SAS and SATA. This is by no means a small number, especially for most home lab users. And of course, this can only be achieved if you're using many SAS expander enclosures as the card itself only has eight SAS lanes. But if you have an extremely large array of enclosures all connected in a daisy chain or perhaps a ring topology and you have more than 512 drives connected then the 1024 maximum number of addressable drives for the 9207-8e might be your thing all right the seventh difference between the 9200-8e and the 9207-8e is driver support the SAS 2008 chipset in the 9200-8E is long considered end of life by Broadcom and probably for that reason some enterprise vendors have deliberately disabled driver support for this generation of controllers, namely Red Hat Enterprise Linux version 8 and above and VMware ESXi 7 and above no longer have driver support for cards like the 9200-8E. If you are using one of those OS's, life might be easier if you choose the 9207-80, e which is still supported. The final and eighth difference between the 9200-8E and the 9207 is the heatsink. Now, visually, I think you can already tell that the 9207 Dash 80 has a more substantial heatsink than the 9200 80. Of course, this is probably due to the higher power consumption of the 9207 80, which generates more heat. But what you can't see is that the 9200 80 heatsink is epoxied onto the chip and is not easily removable. On the other hand, the 9207-8E heatsink uses regular thermal paste and can be removed and repasted should you, should you desire to do so. So if you're someone who likes to ensure you have optimal cooling by repasting your thermal paste every few years, you might prefer the 9207-8E. So guys, those are the eight things you need to know when choosing between the 9200-8E versus the 9207-8E. Each one has their own strengths and weaknesses, but hopefully this video will help you make the best choice based on your own preferences on how much weight you give to each of these factors. Now, if you wanna research this topic more on your own, I'll leave links down in the video description to official Broadcom documents for your reference. All right, guys, that's it for this video. If you found this video useful, be sure to give it a like. And if you're into building servers, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll know when I release a new video. Also, if you'd like to support my channel, check out my eBay store where I have the largest selection of LSI IT mode HBA SAS controllers already flashed and ready for your true NAS, Unraid, and ZFS servers. Link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching and have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.